A cup of kindness is what most of us take on New Year's Eve. A cup of kindness and much more is what one hardworking man tries to give to the world every single day. What he does and how he does it is our Sunday morning cover story. This story begins in 1993 when American Greg Mortensen set out to climb K2, the second highest mountain in the world on the northern border of Pakistan. My sister Krista, who had severe epilepsy, died suddenly at age 23 and that's what prompted me to go to K2. But she had an amber necklace she got in Africa, so I wanted to put it on top of the mountain. But he didn't make it all the way. It's a tale that resonates with tens of thousands of school children the world over, like these third graders in Rockford, Illinois. As he climbed farther up the mountain, it got harder to breathe. So he went down and met this guy, he and the guy led him down to, to a small village. Oh, um, they thought he was a giant. Yep, because he was so tall and they were so short. I was completely exhausted and emaciated, and I had to walk 58 miles uh, to get to the nearest village. The villagers took him in and nursed him back to health. They had very little, but they gave me everything they had. Um, I was very touched by their hospitality. And then a guy led him to town, and he saw that kids didn't have schools. He asked the children where, um, where was their school, and their school is just flat, flat ground. ground. I guess I had that kind of eureka moment. I, I, I immediately, or in a rash moment, I said, I promise when I come back, I'll build you a school. And little did I know that changed my life forever. And not only Greg Mortensen's life, but the lives of thousands of Pakistani and Afghani children in remote, war-torn regions. Suddenly, this 36-year-old ER nurse living in San Francisco had found a new purpose. I had many lessons to learn. He shares those lessons in his book, Three Cups of Tea, which has been on the bestseller list for some 100 weeks. His first lesson would be a hard one. You have to raise the money to build this school. So what'd you do? Well, I had no clue how to raise money. I looked up the name of 580 celebrities and movie stars and sports heroes. And then I proceeded over 10 weeks to hand type 580 letters. Dear Michael Jordan, dear Sylvester Stallone, and so on. And I thought, that's not too bad. But guess what happened? Nothing happened. And then he sold everything he owned and lived in his car. So my mother, who's a principal at Westside Elementary School in River Falls, Wisconsin, invited me to come and talk to the kids. From that talk, another lesson. Answers come when you least expect them. A fourth grader named Jeffrey came up to me, and he looked at me deadpan and said, I have a piggy bank at home, and I'm going to help you raise money for that school. And I didn't, wow. didn't think anything of it. Six weeks later, the school had raised $623.40 in pennies. It was the biggest check I'd ever gotten. When Greg Mortensen spread the word of what the children had done, checks from adults started pouring in. He raised the $12,000 he thought he'd need, and a year after his first visit, he returned to Pakistan to meet with the village leader, Haji Ali. And he said, if you want to build a school first, we're going to have to build a bridge. <laughs> So you hadn't, come you back, hadn't counted on that. Counted on that. Come back to America, raise $10,000 more. It took another year. But in 1995, Mortensen returned again to the village. And in 10 weeks, they built a 284-foot span bridge over the Brawler River. And it was, it was an amazing engineering feat. They carried five 800-pound steel cables 18 miles. When they built the bridge in 10 weeks, I realized that they were very serious about a school. By now, Mortensen had co-founded his nonprofit Central Asia Institute and was beginning to gain support for what he was doing. But the key lesson he needed to learn was yet to come. I spent six months living in the village trying to get the school built, and we weren't doing very well. And one day, Haji Ali took me by the side. and He said, if you really want to build a school here, son, you need to sit down and be quiet and let us do the work. And in six weeks, the school got built. It was an important lesson. I had to let go and let the community be empowered. What is your name? What is your name? 
What? Greg is a national treasure, and the work that his organization does has a tremendous impact uh, in every, every village it touches. And Army Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Colenda, now stationed at the Pentagon, saw Mortensen's work firsthand in Afghanistan. One of the key things that, that Greg and his organization do is they do a tremendous amount of coordination with the elders, make sure that they're going to not only build a school, but they're going to make sure it's got an education program and uh, that they're going to manage it after the fact. Soon, Mortensen began to realize his schools could become a building block for peace if he could bring girls into the classroom. Because when those educated girls grow up to become mothers, they are less likely to want their children to go to war. The Taliban were mainly targeting illiterate, impoverished society to get recruits because educated women were refusing to allow their sons to join the Taliban. Because of this, Mortensen says, the Taliban often attack schools that girls attend. But in 15 years, only one of his schools has been hit. Why aren't they bombing your schools? Well, our schools are very desired by the communities. Mm -hmm. And these other ones aren't? I mean, I'm just curious. Well, the missing link there is that there's no local community involvement. Um, outside contractors come in, plunk in a beautiful school, He's got exactly the right strategy. The villagers built it with their own hands. Uh, they don't want to see anybody mess with it. Lieutenant Colonel Kalenda, who led an army unit in Afghanistan in a region around one of Mortensen's schools, noticed something remarkable. The level of violence emanating from that area as a part of this entire effort uh, dropped precipitously. And they don't want their sons to die. To the third graders of Rockford, Illinois, this is one lesson they are happy to explain. In school, you could learn about being nice. People would respect each other instead of being all mean and grumpy. I don't want to have any wars with them anymore because we really need to stop so um, more people in our country will stop dying. Toward that end, they pooled their pennies. Their school donated nearly $3,000 to Pennies for Peace, Mortensen's children's organization. I've lost a lot of pennies, but it's for a good cause. <laughs> How are you? I am fine. Th those first few kids in school, is kind of like planting a seed of, of hope. When I look in the eyes of my children, I see the children in Pakistan and Afghanistan, and I think we should do everything we can to leave our children legacy of peace. Greg Mortensen's relentless focus on the next generation, both here and overseas, seems to be making an impression. So far, his organization has built 78 schools. Eight more are under construction. And he plans to keep building them as long as there are lessons to learn and teach.